Jack, 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 on the Jack, beat. on the Jack, 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 Good evening, <laughs> this is the Y Chat. It's another opportunity that we are live with you guys. It's an amazing experience, but man, we missed you guys. I hope you're doing well. And today we are going to be handling where we left, actually. Uh, what was it about? Praying, so, uh, praying in the, spirit. the language of the spirit. Yes, yeah, the yes, language yes. of the spirit. I think that's exactly. where we left. So we are going to be indulging on the language of the spirit. Mm -hmm. We are still talking about prayer. This should be part four. And I believe God is going to speak to us today. Let's pray before we begin. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome your Holy Spirit today. Grant us grace as we discuss and dis uh, share on this subject of prayer. Create an illumination in our hearts and our minds. And dear Father, cause our viewers to be activated in the line of prayer. And dear Father, impart the spirit of prayer that, dear Lord, we may be joined together. Knit our hearts together to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you for this we ask in Jesus name. Amen. Greetings. Yes sir. <laughs> Good to see you. Asante. <laughs> Greetings to everyone. Once mm. again, it's a blessed opportunity to share God's word together. And we trust that in our conversation, as we look at the word of God, you will be empowered, you will be blessed. Yes, Pastor well, Moses. I, I've been wondering, there are right. so many demis, uh, stories about mm -hmm. the language of the spirit. And yeah. we, may, we may need to demystify yes. uh, what the language of the spirit really is. Okay. What is the language of the spirit? Uh, to begin with, I feel... The language of the Spirit is a reference to speaking in tongues mm -hmm. as it is normally used. However, when you bring in the concept of language, what you're actually saying is that there is a culture that surrounds any given language. Actually, language is one of the greatest transmitters of a culture. You'll discover that when you know the language of a certain uh, tribe or a certain nation, then you quickly also understand the culture of that mm -hmm. nation or that tribe. Mm -hmm. So when we talk of the language of the spirit, you are referring to, uh, in an experiential sense, speaking in tongues, and uh, in a more wider sense, the culture that surrounds speaking in tongues. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> a real definition. Yes. Many people say it's a New Testament thing. Was there an experience where people spoke in tongues or... Uh, an incident where someone spoke in tongues in mm -hmm. the Old Testament? Well, to begin with, I feel that um, sometimes we, we run into problems when we try to dissect the Word of God in the sense of uh, new and old, mm. or in the sense of something like law and grace, mm -hmm. or in the sense of something like uh, major prophets, minor prophets. Uh, those divisions are necessary in terms of uh, understanding theological frameworks. But when it comes to embracing the things of God, it's always important to have a very holistic view in that you don't uh, corner something as to be maybe of the New Testament or the Old Testament mm -hmm. and something like that. For instance, and I'll come back to what you've just said. For instance, when you look at the story of a man like Balaam, I've been studying him quite recently. Uh, somebody can simply say, no, Balaam is an Old Testament guy and, and you just leave it at that. But you'll be surprised that in the book of Revelation, Jesus himself speaks to one of the churches concerning the doctrine of Balaam. Mm. So sometimes when we try to split things, we end up missing what could be coming through in a comprehensive and a more collective sense. Holistically. Yes, a holistic uh, point of view. So coming to the speaking in tongues, have we had people in the Old Testament that spoke in tongues? What you see in the Old Testament, you see people prophesying. Uh, and there is an element in which speaking in tongues involves prophecy. And I'm just making reference to the 70 elders that uh, Moses was told by God, I'll take your spirit, spirit and, and put it spirit upon them. Yeah. That is one. Secondly, you also have got prophetic references mm -hmm. to speaking in tongues from the Old Testament. So one of them is uh, in the book of Isaiah. And I think this one is very important uh, for our discussion because... I remember when I was studying on this um, a while back, this really caught my attention. 
Uh, this is now Isaiah 64 uh, and verse number 2. It says, oh, let me pick from verse 1. Isaiah 64 verse 1. All that you'd rend the heavens, that you'd come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. As fire burns bushwood, brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. What I'm looking for here is that expression that as fire causes water to boil, mm -hmm. as fire burns brushwood. So there is an element in which when God has come down and his spirit has come down, there is a reaction. There is an expression. And what happens is that he makes his name known to his adversaries. So there are various references, not just what I've read alone, but there's also a reference in the book of Isaiah. There's also a reference in terms of the prophetic uh, word that prophet Joel gave, saying that afterward I will pour out my spirit on all flesh mm -hmm. and your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Your young men are going to see visions. And upon my male servants and my male servants I'll pour out my spirit. So you have references, okay. all right. Yes. Is there a relation between uh, Romans 8.26 and 1 mm -hmm. Samuel chapter 1? Okay. Whereby the Bible talks of the spirit. Yes. Helps us in our infirmities. Yes, Before yes. We do not know what we what ought. we ought to pray. Yes, uh -huh. but he helps us with groanings. Yes, that cannot be uttered. Right. Then the woman uh -huh. who is under contentious engagement with the other woman. Yes, <laughs> Hannah and Penina. Yeah. Yes. There was a story that she went to pray. Yes. But she couldn't utter. Yes, 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 yes. Uh huh. But her lips. Yes. Were just moving. <laughs> yeah. Was yes. that praying in the spirit? <laughs> That's in a very strong. In, in, in uh, reference to uh, yes, romance, the yes, way yes. groanings that cannot be uttered. Yes. It's a very strong um, argument mm -hmm. that one cannot refute when you look at the Bible, as I said again, holistically. holistically. Yes. Because if you look at it within its immediate context, Mm. Then it appeared even strange to Eli, who was the priest then. Mm. Because Eli was wondering, I mean, is this woman a drunkard At nine who has walked into yeah. the temple and is just here, maybe uh, Pombeake may let her happen, something <laughs> like that. But then when you now look at it holistically, then now you begin to understand these operations of the spirit. Mm. And you can now see that Anna had prayed until she could no longer pray with understanding. Mm. And now she had moved into praying in the pray spirit. With my mind. Yes, and I'll pray with my understanding. First Corinthians 14 talks about the same. Mm. Yes. Mm. So uh, you're right in terms of that, yes. Oh, okay. Mm. So uh, what are the benefits okay. of the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the reference to the language of the spirit? Yes. Uh, probably uh, it being the initial sign mm -hmm. that you're filled with the Holy yes. Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Is it in uh, Acts? I'll actually uh, pick it from Mark Ma oh, yeah, because this is very Mark. important, mm -hmm. uh, so particularly, it yes, it gives approach. it a very good foundational approach mm -hmm. because a lot of people may uh, regard praying in tongues as something that uh, Pentecostal churches do. Mm -hmm. But when you look at Mark chapter number 16, Mark 16 and verse number 17, these are the words of Christ. He says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Mm -hmm. Notice this. They will speak in new, with new tongues. New, new tongues yeah. So the speaking of tongues, first and foremost, is actually declared by Jesus Christ himself. As a promise. As a promise. Mm. He said, all who believe in my name. Mm. Now, what does it mean to believe in the name of Christ? It is a reference to salvation. So when we are born again, we, are, we receive our right standing with God by believing in Christ, believing in the name Jesus, which means Savior, saving men from their sin. Mm -hmm. When we believe in Him, then we become now positioned to receive the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. I like to say it this way, the, the gift of God to the sinner is salvation. But the gift of God to the believer is the Holy it's Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So for a sinner, what will happen is that the Holy Spirit is going to cause conviction. conviction. The Holy Spirit is going to cause this person to become aware of his need for a savior. Mm -hmm. But then that drawing is a separate experience 
from now being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And now coming to the book of Acts, you'll discover this. Every single time there was the infilling of the Spirit, there was always a manifestation of praying in tongues mm -hmm. or speaking in tongues. As the Spirit gave, As the Spirit gave utterance. utterance. Every single encounter that you see, beginning from Acts chapter number 2, moving through into the entirety mm. of the whole book, that every single time that you see the Holy Spirit filling individuals, filling people in a house, filling people in a service, filling people who are praying, there is always the speaking in tongues. So what about the edification bit, whereby our believers got to be strengthened and energized mm -hmm. and all that? Because right. many believers sometimes think yes. this, this praying in tongues business mm -hmm. yes. is just like uh, bubbling and stuff and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. They have reduced it to like that, yes, yes, but yes. they don't look at the significance bit of mm -hmm. it. Is it 1 Corinthians chapter 14? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 1 uh, Corinthians chapter number 14. 14 yeah. um, we're going to look at uh, verse... Number two, mm. the Bible says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, mm -hmm. but to God. Mm -hmm. So the first benefit of speaking in tongues is that your experience is not directed to men. Mm -hmm. Your experience is directed to God. This is a language that you're speaking to God. Then the second benefit is still in the same verse. For no one understands him. Mm -hmm. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So, benefit number one, when you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking unto God. Benefit number two, no one can understand you. And I like it that way. Mm -hmm. Because for us who are coming from an African point of view, our spiritist worldview, mm -hmm. believing that when I say the plans I'm having for next year, a witch will catch what I've said, mm -hmm. go and put it somewhere in a pot or do something. Mm -hmm. When the scripture then says that no one understands me when I'm speaking in tongues, it's a blessing to know then that I can pray, I can commune with God, and there is no influence whatsoever. There is no enemy whatsoever that, that can, can arrest yeah. or interject mm. or even make any sense mm. because the Bible says no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So mm. the third benefit is that when you are now in the spirit, and you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking mysteries. Mm -hmm. These are things you yourself, you don't even know. Mm -hmm. Because the Spirit of God is helping your spirit mm -hmm. to pray in accordance to the will of God. And we don't even know how we should pray as we ought to. But the Spirit is helping us in our weakness. So as I'm declaring mysteries, who knows? Maybe I am praying for a loved one who is someplace. Yeah. And I may not even know what's going on. But yeah. the Spirit knows that for that individual to come through, there is of necessity for one to stand in the gap and to pray. So as I'm praying in the Spirit, the Spirit is guiding my prayer to pray in accordance with the will of God. Because so you're, not all, you're not all knowing. I'm not all knowing. I'm not all present. Yes. I'm not all powerful. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the Spirit and the experience of praying in the language of the Spirit mm. has got such an advantage because sometimes you can have a heaviness in your heart, in your spirit, mm. and you get into a meeting and you begin to pray. And as you're praying and you're praying in tongues and you're at that, all of a sudden, that burden is lifted. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know what it was, but you know you are burdened. And you can tell as well when the burden has lifted. What has happened is that you've just experienced one of the mysteries in the spirit. Mm. That there was something that I felt was on me. And what I needed at that particular time mm. was to just bring it unto the Lord. Mm. And as I brought it unto the Lord, I live with a witness in me. That the heaviness I had is, is no longer there. Yes. There are believers yeah. who most of the time you hear, I don't feel God. Mm. I don't see God. Mm. I don't even know where I'm whether I'm still born again. Mm -hmm. Can the infilling of the Holy Spirit help mm -hmm. in terms of that assurance? Is it, okay. I think there's, there's, there's a story in John chapter 14. Yes, yes, wrong, yes. Uh -huh. That confirms that at least yes. there's that uh, assurance. Uh-huh. And someone feels, yes. by the way, I'm not off tangent. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah, especially these young believers who believe, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and even those who are, they, you mm. may not see God, you may not feel God, but mm. the truth is, <laughs> He's in you. Right. Uh, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. About verse 14, 15. John, John. John 14, verse uh, 15. 15. 14, 15. 14, 15, 14, 15 there, okay. Uh, or 16 there. All uh, right, okay. Well, let's pick it up from. Um, 15 mm. it says if you love me keep my commandments mm -hmm. 
And I will pray the Father, and he will mm. give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Mm. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him mm. nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you mm. and will be in, in you. you. I really love the words of Christ because he actually helps us to understand the operation of the Spirit. We are told that the world cannot receive him because the world cannot see him, nor, nor can they know him. But you know him for he dwells in you. One of the greatest challenges that I've also uh, experienced at a personal level and also interacting with other believers is that many times because of our upbringing, we experience the world through our five senses. Mm -hmm. We see, we hear, we smell, we taste, we touch. The senses of interactions. Yes, mm -hmm. we have that. As far as uh, every human being is concerned, every normal human being is concerned. But when it comes to the spirit, notice what Christ says. He says, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So there is a sense in which it can be conflicting. When you want to see, when you want to hear, when you want to smell, when you want to taste or touch, as you do in the natural, and depend on that to pick from the Spirit. Because we are told the Spirit will be with you and then in you. As a matter of fact, that can even explain how one can be saved by the drawing of the Spirit, the Spirit being with you, and then the infilling as a separate experience, the Spirit being in you. So what we need to learn now is how we can move from not depending entirely on our five senses, because we do depend on them for everyday living, but not depending on them entirely to qualify the presence of the Spirit mm. and the directions of the Spirit. But because about, the Spirit is now on the inside of us. But what about, what about those who are on the verge of entering another level whereby all taste and see mm -hmm. that the Lord mm -hmm. is good? Yes. Or um, greater is He that is in you. Is in you. Right. Or even that which we have seen, mm -hmm. that which we have heard. Yes, that, that which we have handled with our hands. Yes, even of yes. The, Yes. Yeah. All right. Could, could that be appealing to the five senses? Let me put it this way. Mm. Um, well, that's on another level. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'll put it this way. Yeah. You see, the very first thing that we need to establish mm. is that when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, he comes to dwell in their spirit. Oh, okay. First and foremost. First of all. Mm -hmm. Then you may have manifestations of the spirit mm, interactions now yes where by now you can hear somebody saying uh, i felt something oh wow fire what has happened is that the reality of the spirit has also gone through the interface of the mind mm. that now they can literally tell by their own physical experience and responses. this is what mm. has happened to okay. me okay. let me bring in the woman with the issue of blood wow. the bible says that when she touched the hem of the garment of jesus mm. she felt in herself, herself that she was cured of her infirmity and the blood flow stopped mm -hmm. so there was a witness in her spirit mm. that as i touched this hem honestly i can tell deep down inside of me have been healed. Then the scripture now says, and then the blood flow ceases. Oh, yeah. So there is principally the necessity to understand that the Holy Spirit comes to commune with our spirit, comes to indwell in our spirit, and then from that we can now have physical manifestations. Oh. Because when we put physical manifestation as the very first thing, without understanding that the spirit does not come perpetually to always so deal just on the outside. No, you. he comes to indwell in you. Jesus mm. said he will come and be with you and he will be in, in you. you. Mm. So the in you has got to do now with your spirit man. Mm. And now from your spirit man, when your mind now is aligned, because remember again in Romans 8, and we say this again in our discussions, that to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So when your mind is aligned now to the realities of the spirit, then now you can have physical manifestations.
But it's critical to establish first that the Spirit comes to indwell in us. Mm -hmm. Taste and see that the Lord is good is a very powerful statement. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes and many times people actually understand it as taste in the sense of use that your is, tongue. Mm -hmm. But let me put it this way. There is a way in which an experience you've never had Can be becomes <laughs> appealing to you. Yeah. At the very first time, you're introduced to it. Yeah. And that in and of itself is a different form of mm. tasting. Mm. For example, when you say, taste and see that the Lord is good, what you're saying is that, hey, take a moment, consider Christ. Mm. And as you begin to consider the realities and Christ is revealed to you, mm. you are literally tasting him. Exactly. But not with the use of your tongue. It's an indulgence that is not... This is now an indulgence that mm. takes over your spirit, mm. takes over your emotions, mm. takes over your, your worldview and all of that. And now, from a personal experience, you can now testify that he is good. Is that immersion? Yes. Yes, mm. it is. Because, you see, truth, truth, truth is a person. Because Jesus said, I am the way, John 14, 6, I am the truth. And I am the life. Mm. So an encounter with Christ, what it does is that it unveils a truth that envelops you, engulfs you. Wow. You are immersed into that mm. truth. For example, you'll find there are people whereby they would see something in scripture and they have literally tasted something they've never tasted before and they'll say like, mm, 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 mm. I have never seen it this way. I've never heard it this way. What has just happened is that they have encountered truth and this truth has engulfed them. Mm. And now they are wallowing in this truth and they are like, my goodness, I never thought this was uh, or even, even existed to begin with. So there you have it. There are these guys who are saying, I don't know how to pray yes. because I may not, uh, I want to pray according to the will of God. Right, right, and right. And they go to, because uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the prosecution <laughs> yes. Is from James yes. that you have not because, because you, you ask, ask not. not. And yes. even when you ask, you ask me. So yes. many people uh -huh. are asking, yeah. how is it that, how can I be uh, restricted yeah. from praying a miss? Okay. And then it brings the aspect of mm -hmm. praying in the spirit yes. so that you gain entry into understanding right. them. It should be in yes. Romans chapter 8. I think we right, are right. It is read. Romans 8, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that you, you, you get to know the will right. of God and yes. pray accord, in accordance to the will of God. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Uh -huh. Romans eight twenty six says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now let me bring up James because there's something I'm just beginning to to feel it in mm. my heart mm -hmm. that I believe will really help us. James chapter 4 and verse number 2. You lust and do not have. Mm -hmm. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Mm. Now, notice there's a key word in Romans 8.26. It says that we do not know what we should pray. Mm. We do not know what. And you come to James chapter Is number what four. what in, ref in reference to things? Or what in reference to substance? Okay. In the prayer. <laughs> you, you, you're already picking where I want to go. James 4 verse 3 says, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. So the key word here is amiss. Mm -hmm. Now, the will of God covers the what. Mm. the intentions and motives cover not just the what but the how or even much more deeper the why mm -hmm. it is God's will written in his word that he wants us to prosper and to be in health the what is clear but now why does he want it you see when our why in prayer does not line up with the why of God, then that's where now we miss it. So God because is not I may want now. to prosper so that I can show you my pastor well, friend. Need that uh, who's, who's laughing, laughing now. now. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when my why is not aligned with the why of God, 
I miss it. Mm. But when the what is correct, we've got to know it's not just about the what, but the why is very critical. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the will of God, principally, it is God's word that reveals his will. Mm -hmm. So a person that feels, I do not know the will of God, or they're just sincere and they say, I don't know the will of God. My simple answer to you is spend quality time in the word of God. Get to know God's mind. Get, get to know God's word. Now, when you get that, always ensure not only are you asking for God to do something for you, but you're also sure that the reason for which he does these kind of things has nothing to do with what would be a selfish desire. Because the Bible said in James 4, 3, that you want it because you want to spend it on your own pleasures. Mm -hmm. But rather that the why I'm asking for is aligned to God. For example, I had this from the late uh, Dr. Miles Munro, and it, 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 it became a thought that I dwelt on for a while. Because he said this, many people would ask God to heal them because they want to feel better. But he says, don't you think if you ask God to heal you so that he can use your body to accomplish his purposes... It's a bigger cause. It's a bigger cause. Mm. And therefore, the why of your asking for the what, which is healing in mm -hmm. this case, is lined up with, with God's, God's agenda. agenda. Mm. Because God is spirit, James 4, 20, John 4, 24, sorry. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God being a spirit, he needs a body to work on the earth. So Lord, don't heal this body because of me. Heal it because of you. So that you can have a body to work with on the earth. So he was not obligated. You're looking for a vessel. He wasn't obligated to raise. So Lord, I'm willing yeah. to, to, to be a vessel, but I'm I, sick. I'm sick. <laughs> you need a body that's working well. So health. heal this body mm. and use it for your purposes. Mm. So, and now you're bringing in Lazarus because this, this is powerful. This, mm. this is powerful. Mm. This, this one, oh my goodness. I love it. I love, this is John chapter 12. Mm. John chapter 12. Um, the Bible says, says this in verse 1. Mm. Remember, Lazarus was raised in John chapter 11. Yeah. So this is John chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who was, who, yes, where Lazarus was, who had been dead. Who had been dead. Yeah. Yes. Whom he had raised from the dead. Verse 2. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Mm. Now look at verse 3. Of course, Mary comes, pours out all this uh, oil and so on and so forth. And Judas begins to complain and so on and so forth. Now look at verse number nine. Mm -hmm. It says, now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. That is Jesus. And they came, not for Jesus' sake only, mm. but they might also see Lazarus, Who whom dead? he had raised <laughs> from the dead. Now look at verse 10. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him, many of the Jews went away mm. and believed mm. in Jesus. Mm. So the reason of the resurrection of Lazarus was believe. Thank God for Mary and Martha that were weeping for yeah. their brother. Thank God yeah. that they told Christ, you know what, if you had been here earlier, you'd have raised him. But he's already dead. And we know even in the last day, you raise him again. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm. Raises him from the dead. Now, why was he raised? We just read it in chapter 12. Mm. He was raised so that when the Jews would come and see, they would believe. this man was dead. We were here, by the way. We buried him. We buried this man. Yeah. Now he's here, sitting the, at the, the table. Matanga. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he's enjoying a meal with Christ. The Bible says Jews went away believing mm. in Jesus. Talk about raising the dead. Yes. Can the spray language stimulate faith or oh, build up your faith? Oh, yes, it does. Mm. Oh, yes, it does. Mm. Because the, the scripture says this in Jude, and, and Jude is only one chapter. So if you ever hear a preacher say Jude verse something, <laughs> they are right. Don't, don't think they are reading a Bible that's been written by... Uh, some strange source. But Jude says this, Jude verse 20, mm. uh, but you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, mm. praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm. So when I am praying in the Spirit, I am edifying myself. Mm. I am building myself. 
and, and, and this building is happening in my spirit man because that's where faith dwells mm. because the words I speak to you they're spirit and they are life, life. so yes John 6 63 so whenever you receive a word of God it dwells into your spirit man and the state of your spirit determines therefore how much benefit or rather harvest you get from that word so but your faith yes. is stimulated so your faith is stimulated as you praying in the spirit mm -hmm. because what is happening now is that you are you 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 are you are immersed in the mm. things of God. Mm. It, your, your own mind is not even in your way because you yourself, you don't even understand what you're saying. And, and the Apostle Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 14. So you are immersed into God. You are praying in the Spirit. And what is happening, the Holy Spirit himself is guiding your prayer. And a byproduct of that, which will now be probably benefit number four, is that you become built up on your inner mm. man. Yeah. Yes, in your spirit man. And that's why you'd find the people who would leave a meeting of prayer and they are leaving there feeling charged. Not on the outside, but from within. They can do exploits. Huh? Oh, yeah. Or they can explode. Hey. <laughs> First Corinthians yes. 14. Yes. Is it verse 28? Uh-huh. There is the issue of contamination. Yes, 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 yes. And we have many believers. Right. Say they are coming into contact with uh, mm -hmm. the worldly contamination and all that. Mm -hmm. Question is, can yes. the prayer language yes. help someone free from worldly contamination? Okay. Uh, you said First Corinthians 14, verse number uh, 28. 28. Yeah. Okay. 28 says this. All right. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let mm -hmm. him speak to himself. And to God. This this is the order in church meetings that the Apostle Paul was giving. Mm. But but I understand what you're saying, that when we are praying in the spirit, we are dealing with the contamination of our or, hearts. Or freeing yes. yourself. Yes. The interpretation here comes yes, 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 from yes. giving it perspective. Right, 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 you right. Know? I hear you. I giving hear you. it perspective. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Because uh -huh. if you inter interpret something, you're yes. giving it perspective. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. I I, I want to to go to um Or you can even check twenty seven. Okay, 27. okay, okay. First Corinthians fourteen twenty seven, okay. The one that keep him, let him keep silent. Okay, okay, yes, yes. No, that, that's the one we read, 28. Oh, okay. Yes, we already read that. Uh, all right. Um, I'm thinking of this, uh, Second Corinthians, um, right, chapter number 7, mm -hmm. verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves oh, yeah. from all the filthiness mm -hmm. of the flesh mm -hmm. and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Now, it it brings to to our attention two types of filthiness. There's the filthiness of the flesh. Then there is the filthiness of the spirit. Mm -hmm. I want to bring this together with the first Thessalonians because this is also very important in what we are trying to dissect here. And I remember talking and sharing with us on uh, one of the wheel the, 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 the explicit statements that bring to us what the will of God is, is sanctification. Oh, yeah. So now notice this is First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 3, and I'll take it all the way down to verse 8. First Thessalonians 4, verse 3 to 8, it says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but in holiness. Now the key is this, verse 8, Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. So when it comes to the cleansing of the body and the spirit, then the Holy Spirit is the one who does it. Because when you look at the connection between sanctification and the Holy Spirit, this is what you'll find. Sanctification is not possible by man alone. I cannot sanctify myself. 
I must rely on our holy God and the provision he has given me as sinful mankind that I can take advantage of it and sanctify myself or find sanctification. And what God has provided to us is the blood of Christ and his Holy Spirit. So notice this, the Holy Spirit, when I am praying and I allow him to have his way in my heart and he takes over in my prayer and I'm busting forth in tongues and I'm just flowing in the language of the Spirit. What is happening at that particular moment, there are several things which are all kicking in. I am praying unto God. I myself, I don't understand. No other person can understand. I'm speaking mysteries in the Spirit. My prayer is being directed according to the will of God. And at the same time, the Holy Spirit, who is having His way in my life, is cleansing me. Mm. How does He cleanse me? He cleanses me because the Spirit also brings a fire. Remember, John the Baptist said, I'm baptizing you with water. Matthew chapter number 3. Uh -huh. But there is one that is coming mm -hmm. after me who shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Then the next statement says, he has got his winnowing fan in his hand. What does that mean? It means that when the Holy Spirit has come, his fire is there. Fire cleanses. Fire purifies. And that winnowing fan is removing from my spirit mm. things that are not of God. It removes from my spirit impurities that I've picked along the way. Maybe I went through a particular situation and it left me bitter. As I engage with the spirit of God, that bitterness is being dealt with from its root. Because the Holy Spirit is working in me, sanctifying me, cleansing me. Because remember, we've been called to holiness by God. And he has also given us his spirit, according to what we read in 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 8. So there are these guys whom giving thanks is a very difficult thing, yes. especially when they have got no reason yes. to give yes. thanks. Yes, 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 yes. And the Bible says, yes. in all things, give thanks. Give thanks. Yes. Can the prayer language um. help, in th help in thanksgiving? Wow. I would say it's a yes and no. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the sense that when we pray in the Spirit, you're praying mysteries. So I cannot qualify mysteries because remember again the scripture said no one mm. can understand. Mm. Not unless maybe you've been given the spirit of the discernment of spirits. But really it may not be the, the you, you may not have be able to split hairs that much. But this is what I want to say. When it comes to thanking God, there are a number of uh, like I would say biblical truths that have been made explicit. One of the things that you pick up in the Bible, by and large, are what I may call protocols of God. Mm. How God says, this is what I want you to do in such and such a place. For instance, uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse number 6 says that without faith it is what? Impossible, Impossible to please God. God. For whoever does what? Comes um, to God must uh, Believe, believe that he is, he is and, and then is a rewarder. so there is a protocol there that whenever I am coming to God I must, I must believe. believe that he, he is. is and I like it that way not he was not he will be but he is that means he is present with me right now as I begin to pray just the Emmanuel way, God together with us just the way it is dangerous to be where God was Aish. <laughs> now notice this the Bible says this Psalms 100 and verse number 4. Enter into his gates, gates with thanksgiving, thanksgiving and into his courts with, with praise. praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Mm. This is a protocol of approaching God. God says, when you're coming to my gates, and I like to, to just use the, the, the physical understanding. This is the formula. That when I'm going to the house of God and I'm reaching the gate where the church is, whether it is a premise that has been built or it's a premise that has been hired out, I just reach the gate. I ought to know from this point on, I should be looking for reasons to thank God. Number one, the fact that I'm alive. Yes, I've lost money. I've lost a loved one. This is not working. That is not working. All of these things are wrong in my life, but I am still here. Just that alone. Is a reason to be grateful. To again take a look at myself and discover, you know, with all the things I'm dealing with, I am not admitted in hospital. 
I'm not admitted in Mazare Hospital. There is no file that has been opened with a case that mm. a certain patient displayed the following symptoms mm. that are bordering schizophrenia. Mm. <laughs> but the fact that You're I'm in my it. right mind mm. is another reason to be grateful. Mm. The fact that I have the opportunity, for instance, like in this country, whereby we can worship God, we have been allowed to express our faith as we best know how, is another reason. And I'm telling you, by the time you hit the door of the church, mm. indeed, all those reasons that you have looked at and meditated, they give you now a reason to also praise God. And you have provoked a certain dimension uh -huh. in God yeah, yeah, that yeah, actually yeah, causes yeah, him to yeah, respond. You see, this is what surprises me. And, and this one, I've heard it before, and I know many preachers have also shared the same. The scripture talks about the ten lepers came to Jesus. Yeah. And what leprosy does is that it destroys the extremities of your body. Mm. So things that are popping out like your ears, your nose, your fingers, your toes, whatever is just an extremity, leprosy begins to deal with that. So you'd find that a person that is leprous probably has lost a third of their finger mm. because leprosy is dealing with the extremity. So the Bible says they came to Christ and they asked him, Lord, if you're willing, cleanse us. The Bible says he cleansed them. And he told them, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. That means that the leprosy, which had eaten maybe a certain extremity, stopped where it was. The cleansing means it was removed. The damage was, was stopped. stopped. Now, but notice. The restoration now. Now you're preaching. Mm. Now you're preaching. Mm. The individual that came back, to say thank you. Was made whole. The Bible says he was made whole. My preacher's imagination is this. The cleansing stopped the leprosy. The fight had come. But the making whole means the if you had lost your finger, you were only left with maybe two thirds or a again. third. Right there by saying thank you. It grew again. It was back again. If you had lost a bit of your earlobe by just saying, Lord, I thank you. Boop, back up the again. ear was back to where it was. If you had lost maybe one of your nostrils that was eaten up by leprosy, by saying, thank you, Lord, it was made whole again. And when you look at thanksgiving and the mysteries in thanksgiving, it is so mind-blowing. And Jesus actually asked his disciples, weren't they ten that came, but only one has returned? Can you see where Christ makes the distinguishing points? It's not the people that come to request but the distinguishing is in the people that come to say thanks. We must stop there <laughs> because we must continue with this, especially yes, 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 yes. on the mist, on, on, on the, yeah. the elements that yes. provokes God to yes. respond to our prayer. Oh, wow. Now wow, that we have wow, dealt wow. with, the, ooh, ooh, with, 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 with the prayer language. God. Yes. Thanksgiving being one. Yes, yes, yes. Joy being one. That's another one. I'm telling you. Well, scripture says, with joy you'll draw water Let's from the wells of your salvation. <laughs> Isaiah 12 verse 3. And woo. We, no, it's going to be exciting. I cannot wait next, for the next week. Yes. Next week is going to be explosive because we're yes. going to be talking about these protocols. Yes, yes. And then we're going to deal with what is it really that provokes God to yes. respond to your prayer. Right. Even when he's not obligated to. Yes, But yes. by the fact that you have yes. touched a certain code, Aye. he says, Aye. Mm, there's something, there's a Syrophoenician woman. <laughs> I was just thinking of the same verse. The message translation says this. Thanksgiving mm. is his pass code. Mm. So those pass codes is what you want to look at. And it's going to be great. <laughs> That's the time we have for you today for oh, White Chat, yes. talking about the prayer language. Next yes. weekend, we're going to be talking about the pass code. Yes. What provokes, what God, provokes God to, to move your, as God. Yeah, or even move on your behalf. <laughs> Kuchaza ka mungu. Kuchaza mungu kuchaza 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 yeah, when he's not even obligated. And come on now. Hey, come on now. Yes. Even dogs. Aish, aish, aish. Aish. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Exactly. We are going to be touching on that comprehensively and yes. we pray that God will grant us grace to see you next Saturday. Amen. What are you discussing tomorrow? Oh yeah, yeah. on my social media page, Daniel Gichana, mm -hmm. I am looking at the parts of life. Parts Very of interesting. Life. I've, I've, I've dwelt on it for a while. This is now part six, part six that has just gone on and tomorrow I hit part number seven. Mm. And I'm looking at Balaam, mm. Balaam the prophet. You know, this is a very interesting character. Balaam knew the ways of God. 
because he was a Midianite. And by virtue of him being a Midianite, Midian was one of the sons of Abraham and Keturah. The wife he married after Sarah died. One of the six sons was Midian. So he comes from a place whereby he has been familiar with the ways of God. The brother of but Zimra. now, <laughs> yes, an Ishbak <laughs> and Shua. So when he now comes to a place whereby he's given an offer, a financial offer, so that he can come and curse mm. on the behalf of Balak, who is the king of Moab, the, the children of God, <laughs> that's when you begin to see the destruction wow. of one that has been gifted, anointed of God. Mm. And you see the journey, how it all goes down. Mm. What shocked me is that Balaam, who, who the Bible, he used to say of himself that he would see visions with an open eye. Like he's looking and he's seeing a vision. Mm. Like that. He would fall not, down with not, open eyes and see a vision. It's not a trance. And, and he never, me, actually, mm. Balaam even prophesied the coming of Christ. Mm. Yes, he prophesied. You're talking about that. He looked at the children of Israel and he said, I see one that is rising, mm. but not now, at a later time, mm. a reference to Christ. But he died as soothsayer. It's a shocking thing. Born so we're looking at that. Uh, the parts again, of life. Uh, yeah, yeah, very sad. Go not the way of Balaam is go the topic. Go not the way of Balaam. You better see you be on there. Saturday. Please don't yes. miss to go to church tomorrow. And please, let's ensure that we continue putting on our... You have your mask. Yes, Pastor Moses. Put on your mask when you go to church and put it on right. I have it here with me. Like that. Mm. You know, let it cover all your vital... Oh, not vital, <laughs> is it? <laughs> your respiratory. Yeah, and then ensure that yes. you continue sanitizing mm. and, uh, you know, washing your hands. Keep yeah. your social distance mm. because this COVID thing is real. In as oh, much yeah. as God is not the author... Yes. of this pandemic he is a finisher yes he may not be the alpha of mm -mm. the virus but he, he is can the omega finish it because yes. he is the omega so mm. make sure you observe the protocols and i believe god is going to preserve and keep you as we continue declaring psalm 99 91 mm. over your life have yes. a lovely evening see you again yes. this saturday on white chat god bless you god bless you